everyone. My name is Clarissa Garcia, and welcome to Cozy Corner with Gladdy, a safe space to talk about life and ways we want to improve. This quarter in Spanish 147, I have learned so, so much, but I also realized I have a lot more learning to do. My journey begins with my family, my mom being an immigrant and my father having crossed the border in my grandmother's belly. My parents worked so hard to defy the stereotypes and climb up the corporate ladder to be successful in America's eyes. My parents committed to being seen as intelligent, but in order to do so, they had to assimilate. They almost assimilated too, too well, and that left me with a lot of figuring out to do. Growing up, I knew Spanish as my first language, but as I approached the age to enter school, my parents tried only to speak to me in English, fearing I would be confused and not proficient in any language. We didn't speak Spanish at home anymore, only when I spoke to my grandparents. I went through my schooling, never expressing that my family members were actually immigrants. I was even unaware that I was first generation because we never talked about it. I applied it to college in denial that I was first generation college student, refusing the resources offered because I wasn't that Mexican. That's how ignorant I was. I used to wish my skin was lighter and that I was born white and that I was smarter. I was ashamed and wanted anything but the stereotype that was given. To my fellow Mexicans, I was shameful. I didn't speak good Spanish, didn't know the music, and had never been to Mexico. And I appeared extremely whitewashed because, frankly, I was. My own grandmother put me down my entire life and treated me poorly. She wanted me to know perfect Spanish, but to also be fair-skinned, blonde, and blue-eyed. I could not win. Everyone told me that I should be ashamed of being Mexican, and then they would question why I wasn't more Mexican. This was my first exposure to the black legend, never being American enough for the white people with the addition of never being accepted by Mexicans either. I entered college very lost and embarrassed, never having been exposed to Chicano history in my primary and secondary schooling, barely knowing who Cesar Chavez was, and having no reason to be proud of any Latinx role models other than my love for my family. I couldn't connect to anything because I did not know anything. That frustrated me immensely and I wanted to change that. So along with my STEM major, I took on a Spanish major to learn back my own language. The only ironic part was that I lost my language and culture due to assimilation and yet here I was in college learning it back from the white professors. The white people took it away and they'll be the ones to give it back. How does that work? I love my fellow white allies, but the idea has always baffled me. Slowly, I began reading literature and history that helped form my identity. A year ago in Spanish 174, I learned what it meant to be Chicana, and I realized I was one. I learned how my grandfather came here through the Bracero program and the measures they took to make sure that he was not going to stay. Things were starting to make sense, and I was rebuilding who I was through where I came from but I still felt lost where I fit within the America that I see. After this quarter in Spanish 147, I now understand my full narrative. I now understand the conditions that surround me, the fears, the racism, and the pressure. The pressure that comes with living in this land where only some are free. Reading the black legend showed me that these stereotypes go way back to the days of Christopher Columbus when the Spanish arrived and that they depicted all Spanish speakers as uniquely cruel, bigoted, tyrannical, lazy, violent, treacherous, and depraved. These stereotypes were made up hundreds of years ago by some people whom had never even met the Spanish. The people currently using these racist ideas don't even know why they're using them today. In addition, there are people like Josiah Strong, who spread the idea that salvation of the human race depends on the expansion of only the white race. He manipulated Charles Darwin's theory to fit an explanation as to why whites were above the rest with hopes of eliminating all other races in the Americas. This is similar to the mentality that people have now on how to make America great again. A complete purification of the races. This is the mentality these common school shooters have, that it's what God would want. It's the sole idea of manifest destiny. It's their positive way to look at a genocide, a normalized view that they have formed. I now understand how we've gotten to this tragic point. 
So where do we go from here with all the knowledge that we now know? We use this knowledge to educate ourselves and others, to participate in voting, and to mobilize these groups that are less heard. Just as Supervisor Alejo has continued to do throughout his entire career, we must keep pushing for change. We must include ethnic studies into curriculum so students can start seeing themselves as part of history and part of this country. We help those who are racist begin to humanize the people of color around them. As we implement these new things, we must be prepared to fail, but to keep going, reflecting and refining, because we only lose when the conversation stops. I'm thankful that I no longer look down on where I came from or that I'm embarrassed to have my beautiful brown skin. I am grateful to know the struggle and beauty in my history so that I can push my community forward. I am happy that I have finally been given the truth and an opportunity to think for myself because, that, because what I was previously taught did not make any sense and I did not feel fulfilled. So thank you, Professor Slater, for changing my mind and helping me understand a hole that I've had inside of myself for 21 years. Thank you for putting yourself in a vulnerable place to face these problems in front of a large class and then to ask us, what do we think? Thank you for offering the perspective of a white man who is willing to admit wrongdoings within our own society right now and encouraging us to demand more for ourselves even when our university isn't quite working for us. After taking this class, I learned that I should be challenging the ideas and confronting things that appear complex and even scary. So I tell my viewers now, stay hungry for knowledge and let us raise our next generations to be even better than the current ones fighting for change in the present. We have the power in us and we can use it to form a better tomorrow. Thank you for listening and have a great night.